to our PwC MIFID II YouTube channel. My name is Tim Alfink and I'm part of the Amsterdam regulatory team at PwC. Today I will be talking to you about best execution. I hope you will enjoy. So let's first have a look at the agenda. First I will provide a short introduction on MIFID II and the place of the best execution rules in the MIFID II framework. After that we will have a look at the specific MIFID II regulatory provisions on best execution. On that basis, I will provide a further outline of the basic principles of best execution under MIFID II, including where relevant the changes to the existing MIFID rules on best execution. Following this, I will talk about the specific requirements for a best execution policy and the best execution reporting. Finally, I will wrap up and give some considerations for investment firms on best execution. As you may know, MIFID II is a massive set of legislative changes for the business and operations of investment firms and the financial market. Two of the main objectives of MIFID II are enhancing the investor protection and increasing transparency in the financial markets. Although best execution is placed in the investor protection provisions of MIFID II, it actually also entails certain transparency or reporting requirements. On this basis, we can place best execution under the various cross-sectional topics of MIFID II, aimed at multiple objectives of MIFID II. Obviously, the best execution obligation to take all sufficient steps to obtain, when executing client orders, the best possible results for investors is directly related to the protection of those investors' interests. However, on the other hand, the various best execution reporting and publication requirements also aim to provide further transparency on the investment firm's execution practices to investors, regulators and other market participants. This cross-sectional position of the best execution requirements will be evidenced by the multiple new and increased requirements for best execution under MIFID II, as we will see later on. Also, best execution is a very nice topic to show the MIFID II legislative structure. As you may know, MIFID II is designed using the European legislative approach known as the Lamfalutu process, which was devised by a committee of wise men chaired by Alexander Lamfalusi. The Lamfalusi process centers around a four-level legislative approach. The first level is the traditional EU decision-making. In this case, the MIFID II Directive and the Markets in Financial Instruments Regulation, or MIFIR. Level 2 are the technical implementation method measures to render the Level 1 principles operational. Level 2 implementing measures do not in any way alter the principles agreed at Level 1, but simply provide the technical details that are necessary to make those principles operational. In this case, these are the various delegated regulations and the multiple regulatory technical standards or RTSs providing explanation and more de technical detail to MIFID II and MIFIR. Then level 3 are the non-binding guidelines adopted by the European Securities and Markets Authority or ESMA, including questions and answers and various guideline papers. Level 4 of the Lamfalusi process goes to enforcement of the rules and is not yet available for MIFID II. As you will see today, best execution has rules in all three levels, in the MIFID II directive, in the delegated regulation and in the RTSs, as well as in ESMA Q&A. I will discuss all of this in more detail now. The main rules on best execution are laid down in Article 27 of the MIFID II Directive, headed Obligation to Execute Orders in Terms Most Favourable to the Client. The first part of Paragraph 1 of Article 27 contains the main requirement, which requires investment firms to take all sufficient steps to obtain, when executing orders, the best possible result for their clients. Please note that the best execution requirements apply to all MIFID II financial instruments, including shares, debt instruments and derivatives. Also, the best execution requirements apply to all MIFID II investment firms that execute client orders, as well as to all so-called execution venues, 
I will discuss the scope of these requirements in more detail further on. So, as I said, the main obligation is to achieve the best possible results for clients. This best possible results should take into account price, cost, speed, likelihood of execution and settlement of the order, size of the order, nature of the order, and any other consideration being relevant for the execution of the order. However, when the order is from a retail client, the best possible result shall be determined in terms of the total consideration, representing the factors of price of the financial instrument and the cost relating to execution. The idea here is obviously that retail clients will be more concerned about the cost of executing the order and obtaining the best possible price for the purchase of the financial instrument and not so much focused on other factors such as speed or likelihood of execution. Also, where there is a specific instruction from the client, both from retail or professional clients, the investment firm shall execute the order following the client's specific instruction. Article 27 of MIFID II furthermore contains rules on order execution policy, best execution reporting by investment firms and execution venues, and a prohibition for investment firms to receive kickbacks for order routing, all of which I will discuss in more detail in a minute. The Level 2 rules on best execution are first of all included in Delegated Regulation 2017-565 of 25 April 2016 as regards organizational requirements and operating conditions for investment firms. Section 5 of this Delegated Regulation is headed Best Execution. This section contains Article 64 on Best Execution Criteria, Article 66 on Execution Policy and Article 65 with specific rules for investment firms carrying out portfolio management and the service of reception and transmission of orders. In addition, there are two regulatory technical standards with rules for best execution reporting. RTS 27 deals with the data to be published by execution venues on the quality of execution of transactions on their trading venues. RTS 28 applies to investment firms executing client orders and concerns the annual publication of information on the identity of execution venues used by the firm, as well as information on the quality of execution achieved on those venues. Finally, ESMA published Level 3 guidance on best execution in their Q&A on investor protection topics. The questions inter alia concern the difference between the current MIFID 1 requirement to take all reasonable steps to obtain the best possible result and the new MIFID 2 requirement to take all sufficient steps to obtain that best possible result for investors. The short answer to this question being that whilst investment firms remain subject to the same overarching obligation to obtain the best possible results on a consistent basis when executing client orders, the requirement for sufficient steps sets a higher bar for compliance than reasonable steps as used under MIFID 1. ESMA also answers additional questions on the timing of the best execution reports as well as on the availability and free accessibility of those reports. MIFID 2 includes four basic principles for best execution that investment firms need to comply with. First of all, each investment firm needs to provide its client with a MIFID II compliant execution policy or best execution policy. Most firms will already have an execution policy as per the MIFID I requirements. However, the policy needs to be revised and updated to reflect all MIFID II requirements on best execution and may also need to include additional financial instruments such as debt instruments and derivatives. As a general starting point, the execution policy needs to explain clearly in sufficient detail and in a way that can be easily understood by the clients how the firm will execute the client's orders. MIFID 2 has detailed requirements on the topics to be explained in the execution policy and this will be covered in more detail in the next slide. Second basic principle will be that investment firms need to be ready to answer their clients' questions and requests for information 
on order execution and the firm's arrangements and policies as soon as possible. Thirdly, MIFID II requires investment firms to monitor the effectiveness of their order execution arrangements and execution policy in order to identify and, where necessary, correct any deficiencies in those policies and arrangements. In particular, firms will need to assess on a regular basis whether the execution venues they selected for use for their clients still provide for the best possible results for their clients. Finally, MIFID II contains an explicit prohibition on receiving any remuneration, discount or non-monetary benefit for routing client orders to a specific trading venue or execution venue, which would infringe the requirements on conflicts of interest. This ties in with the general MIFID II restriction on the receipt of indu inducements from third parties other than the client. Please see our MIFID II YouTube video on inducements for more information on this topic. So, as just mentioned, one of the basic requirements of MIFID II on best execution is the requirement for investment firms to have an order execution policy and the need to obtain the prior consent of clients to this order execution policy. Also, MIFID II requires that in case the order execution policy allows the investment firms to execute orders outside the trading venue, the client needs to be particularly informed about that possibility and needs to provide express consent before the investment firm can go ahead and execute client orders outside a trading venue. And in this context, trading venue means a regulated market, an MTF or an OTF, and any other OTC dealing outside trading venues, including dealing with systematic internalizer, needs prior express consent of the client. In addition, when executing orders to deal in OTC products, including bespoke products, the investment firm needs to check the fairness of the price proposed to the client by gathering market data used in the pricing of the OTC product and, where possible, comparing the product with similar or comparable products. Firms may already routinely taking account of the external market data and externally verifiable reference prices for their OTC products. However, MIFID II now imposes an explicit requirements on the firms to ensure that such checks are carried out on a systematic basis and embedded in their policies and practices. Also, the order execution policy needs to include tailored information for each class of financial instrument. In respect of the different venues where the investment firms execute its clients' orders and the factors affecting the choice for such venues. These factors go back to the already mentioned factors, such as price, speed, cost, likelihood of execution and settlement, size of the order, nature and any other relevant factors. The list of venues in the order execution policy shall include, for each class of financial instruments, at least those venues that enable the investment firm to obtain, on a consistent basis, the best possible result for the execution of client orders. It is, however, also possible for an investment firm to use a single venue for the execution of client orders, provided that it is able to show that this allows the firm to satisfy the overarching best execution requirement. In any event, firms will need to regularly assess the market landscape to determine whether or not there are alternative venues that they could use to execute their orders. Please note that the overarching best execution requirement does not mean that a firm must obtain the best possible results for its clients on every single occasion. Rather, firms will need to verify on an ongoing basis that their execution arrangements and policies work well throughout the different stages of the order execution process. For that purpose, MIFID II also requires investment firms to monitor the effectiveness of their order execution policy arrangements in order to identify and, where necessary, correct any deficiencies in those policies and arrangements. This, in particular, relates to the list of execution venues which should be assessed on a regular basis in order to verify that the listed venues still provide for the best possible results for the clients.
MIFID II also contains various reporting requirements in the field of pest execution. MIFID II requires investment firms to each year publish for each class of financial instruments the top five execution venues used by the investment firm and the information on the quality of execution obtained. Specific requirements exist for firms that transmit, that transmit orders to other firms for execution. They need to report on the top five investment firms where they transmit their orders to. RTS 28 sets the information to be published for each class of financial instruments. This is the name and the identifier of the top five venues or top five investment firms. The volume and the number of client orders executed on that venue, expressed as a percentage of the firm's total executed volume and number of orders. The percentage of orders that were either passive or aggressive in terms of providing or taking liquidity to the market. The percentage of directed orders with a specific in instruction to use this specific execution venue and the frequency, meaning whether more than one trade per day was executed by the firm on average in this specific financial instrument. The information needs to be published on the website of the investment firm and in a prescribed format that can be downloaded by clients. First reporting is required in April 2018 based on 2017 information. However, the rules already provide that this information may lack certain detail on information that is not yet available. In the annual publication, investment firms also include information on the quality of execution obtained on the five trading venues listed. This ties in with the requirement for execution venues to publish on a quarterly basis reports on the quality of execution of transactions on their trading venues. In this sense, execution venue is a broader group than trading venues as defined under MIFID II, which refers only to regulated markets, multilateral trading facilities, and organized trading facilities, or OTF. Execution venue, on the other hand, next to regulated markets, MTF and OTF, also includes systematic internalizers, market makers, and other liquidity providers. This means that investment firms that are not car carrying out the activity of carrying out a trading venue may still be subject to quality of execution reporting in case they qualify as systematic internalizer, market maker or other liquidity provider for a specific class of financial instruments. The detailed requirements on data periodicity Periodicity and format for the quality of execution reporting by execution venues is set out in RTS 27. Reporting is required for each market segment operated by a specific execution venue, as well as for each financial instrument that is subject to a trading obligation under MIFIR. The data to be reported goes back to the factors to be taken into account by investment firms when selecting execution venues in terms of best execution meaning the price, cost, and likelihood of execution and settlement on the execution venue. First reporting by execution venues is expected by June 2018 based on first quarter 2018 data. So to wrap up, a short summary of the main attention points for investment firms in relation to the MIFID II best execution requirements. As of January 8, 2018, firms will need to have their order execution arrangements and order execution policy fully MIFID II compliant. This requires a running monitoring and review structure as regards the order execution arrangements and policy. Prior to any trade, information on the order execution needs to be provided to the client in summary to retail clients and client content needs to be obtained for the order execution policy. Also, firms executing orders outside a trading venue, so OTC, need to get client consent to do so and need to have arrangements in place to make sure that they can conduct an evidence the fair price check for OTC products. Finally, 
both investment firms and execution venues need to be ready to begin their best execution and quality of execution reporting and start to collect data as of the beginning of 2018. Thank you for watching our video on best execution under MIFID 2. Please remember to subscribe to our MIFID 2 YouTube channel at PwC for more interesting videos. Thank you.